Hi, it's Richard here from the OPA Hub website with another in our occasional series of examples of using the JavaScript uh, control extension API. Uh, and in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a normal date uh, control and turn it into a year selector. Uh, this is purely an educational example. Uh, the goal is not to uh, fully build out a business requirement. Uh, nor is, uh, for that matter, is it the, ex the desire to create a completely finished, uh, properly coded example. It's to guide you in how you might achieve the objective, show you some design ideas, and of course you can look in the description of this video, find the link to the post, and download the code if you want to play with it yourself or uh, continue building on it. So without further ado, let's talk about uh, what this actually means in practical terms. We have an OPA project here, and we have three different attributes, one of which is purely so uh, I can drive the uh, HTML to interview with some kind of concrete goal. The other two are going to be the focus of our example. We have the date of the session, which is just uh, the current date, and the date of registration, which will be entered uh, by the user. So the user will uh, select a date, However, the, the example requirement is that they don't want to select a date, they want to select a year, uh, just a year, and they want it always to be the 1st of January of that year. So they don't want to have to go and scroll through, find the date, click on it, they just want to click uh, 2017, and they want it to be the 1st of January 2017. If they click 1963, it should be the 1st of January 1963, uh, for whatever purpose that may be. So let's take a look at our interview. And uh, this is our screen, uh, and we're going to ask the user for the date of registration. Uh, fairly standard design pattern so far. We have a custom property called name, which will be used to identify this instance of the date control. So if I have three date controls on the same page, it's only going to be this one that's going to be worked on. For debugging purposes, and uh, in order to achieve to have access to the values, I've got the session date and the stored date. Now the stored date will be the date chosen by the user. Obviously, if I start the project, um, there will be no stored date. So we need to default to, uh, for example, the 1st of January of the current year, which is why we're using the current date uh, in our project. As far as the code is concerned, um, this is a custom input extension. And as you can see, we're referencing the uh, property that I mentioned a minute ago. And we're going to obtain the current date, the date of the session. So this, uh, this is the name of the session date attribute. And we're doing a whole bunch of logging uh, for, this purposes, for these purposes. So we're getting the um, session date. And then we're going through a whole bunch of hoops to translate that into an actual JavaScript date object. And you'll notice we get the full year. So we extract the uh, year from the session date. So if the session is the uh, 11th of December 2017, we're going to extract 2017. And then comes the magic. We're going to use a, a class called year select. And we're going to call the year select uh, jQuery UI plugin to actually handle the user interface. So we don't have to build the drop down or the contents. And let's take a look. Uh, when you trigger the uh, jQuery UI year selector, you select a starting year, so it's going to start at 1900. The end, uh, which is going to be the end of the list, uh, in this case we've just explained, is going to be the current year because we're going to choose the current date and extract the year, and it's going to be descending. If it gets changed, well, we, we obviously need to um, update the OPA attribute. So you'll see that we update the circulation date, the date of circulation, with the selected uh, value. And we append manually, in this case, uh, 0101, so the 1st of January. Now, um, we need to handle two scenarios, really. First of all, if there is no circulation date, then we need to set up a default, and we're going to use, surprise, surprise, the, the default of being the current year. But if you have already got a value in there, well, we need to retrieve that value and redisplay it so um, that you don't have to keep choosing the value. We remember the value selected. 
Obviously, if you update, we need to make sure that when the update happens, we post the new value to the OPA attribute. And being good citizens, we clean up uh, on the unmount. So let's take a practical uh, example and let's reset this. As you can see, the default date is 2017, goes all the way down to 1900 because that was our end date. I'm going to select uh, 2002. You'll notice that the session date is the 13th of December 2017, which is right now. And the stored date is obviously 2002, but according to our business requirement is the 1st of January. So I'll go forward, and this is just to remind us that we have the date of registration currently as the um, 1st of January 2002. I'll go back. The control remembers the previously stored value, 2002. I can select it select 2009 so the store date is now 2009 come back again it's still 2009 if you want to dig in more detail into this simple example for educational or for self training or tutorial purposes you'll find a link in the description of this video which takes you straight to the post on the OPA hub website this is Richard saying have a nice day